Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In case you were wondering, why the hell are you running Alpha 7.5? Hasn't that been outdated for months? Um, yeah, potentially. And the reason is that I'm recording this actually on July 9th. So why am I scheduling videos two and a half months ahead? Well, this is, by the time that the content comes out, the week that I, uh, or the, my wife is due to have my first child. So it is entirely possible that I am uh, sleep deprived, up to my ass in uh, diapers, or both. Or, I don't know, I could be sitting in a hospital. I have no idea what the situation is going to look like in two and a half months from now. What I do know is that I'll probably not have that much time to record content, so this is one of those videos that I just schedule, uh, well, a good number of weeks ahead. That means that some of the mechanics in this video might be outdated by the time that you watch them, but that of course does not mean that the video is, well, hopefully any less interesting. Now, if you want to send in your own scenario, you can still do so through the link down below in the description. Keep in mind though, I get a lot of scenarios. At the current moment, and that's July 9th, I have 360 scenarios sitting in my inbox. So asking in the comment section, hey, when is my video going to get published or you're ignoring my scenario? Uh, it's only going to get your scenario ignored harder because then I'll actually take the trouble and look you up and delete your scenario because I think that people who whine about their scenario don't get to uh, be rewarded for that. And keep in mind, I take these uh, scenarios through the description link only. Please, nothing in the comment section. That's for this video only. Now, let's have a look. The scenario that was sent in is called Night at the Museum by Sky Kraken. There's not really a story here, but the scenario is that it's a heavy cruiser from 1940. So I am 50 years ahead of the Russian fleet here. And they are sending 10 battleships. Now those these, of course, are not the battleships that you might know from the 1930s, 1940s. These are very old. And let's see how effective one heavy cruiser is going to be against these 10 guys. Now it is the opportunity to get the Heavy Cruiser 2 hull or the Heavy Cruiser 1. The Heavy Cruiser 1 is quite a lot smaller. How big can I get this? 21,000. I'm going to sit at 20,000 tons if I can find the right displacement. 2,500, 22, 2,100. There. Speed. 35 knots. We're going to put everything that's possible on the ship that's going to help it survive against 10 battleships. Part of that is going to be maneuverability. You don't get hit and you don't get sunk. At the same time, you don't get flash fires. If you do get hit and you don't get flash fires, then your chances to increase or, or your chances to survive are going to be even better. But this thing is probably going to be more akin to a battleship in protection than it is to an actual cruiser. That, of course, will come at the expense of displacement. So I'll have to make some trade-offs here and there. And if I get the chance, I'll much rather take something that is going to help me dodge shells than help me mitigate the shells that I do get hit by. Now, a modern tower. Bring in a secondary modern tower. I am somewhat tempted to go with small caliber guns. Uh, six inch, for example, because they just reload so freaking fast. And if you give them the right propellant, they can actually be pretty deadly. But the downside is, you do not have a lot of range. And even battleships can be dangerous, although at that range, you're lucky with a battleship if you hit something that's about, well... If it's five clicks out, you might get a few percent of accuracy. So maybe not the six inch, but the seven inch, with a maximum range of 15.4 with the color and lid I2 propellant would be a good contender. If I go for this, it's going to be a pretty decent penetration chance. Reloads in 12.7 seconds, so I fire, fire seven salvos per. And let's go with some triple turrets. Now the other benefit is that these things are not terribly heavy, which means that I can still use a bit of my displacement for, wait, what? For armor? and for other uh, potentially crucial components. Why the hell does that not want to sit on there? Toll superimposed per bet. Does it need to be a medium? Are you kidding? I cannot put a seven inch turret on there? Nor a six inch? 
This is curious. Oh, but I can put a 9 inch on there. Yeah, that makes total sense. Look at that. You can actually... <laughs> I guess the 7 inch is too small. <laughs> the 7 inch turret's too small to sit on the barbette. Are you kidding me? Nope. <laughs> the game's not kidding. All right, change of plans, upgrade, 8 inch. Interestingly though, these 8 inch guns, it feels like the 7 inch guns are way small or way bigger. Look at that. This is a 7 inch that's almost overlapping with an 8 inch. Sure enough, the barrels aren't that much longer. I'd say the 8 inch barrels are a bit longer, but the 7 inch... They're just way more spaced out. Weird. I don't feel like these are US turrets either. For some reason, on the 8 inch, I only have the Mark IV guns available. Whereas with these, I have the Mark Vs. So the Mark IV's 8 inch actually reload slower than the Mark V 9 inch. Wow. That just goes to show how important that mark number is. Or this is something that still needs to get addressed by the developers. Uh, this should also mean that I can once again use that medium superimposed barbette and put a turret on it. Without complaints. There. Alright, let's put a funnel on here. Uh, hopefully... Nope, two are not going to fit. One big is going to fit and then an advanced... Putting me at 100% engine efficiency. This is also going to put me at 100 and give me a bit more funnel redundancy, I think. Because now I have 96 funnel efficiency and the other one would be 87. So I can afford to have one funnel knocked out, although much preferred if it doesn't happen at all. Uh, I will grant this ship some secondary armament as well. Because I still have some displacement left. Let's say we put some 5 in... No, not 5 inch dual barrels. 4 inch dual barrels on there. And some torpedo launchers on here. This is going to make the ship quite potent against any kind of threat. Although, of course, I am only facing battleships. And the question is really, how effective is this ship going to be against those battleships? Now, I'm not expecting torpedoes, and even if they do have torpedoes, they're not probably going to be very accurate. So let's see. Um, I can probably knock off some of the enter torpedo protection, which is going to help me a little bit with displacement. That's about 300 tons. I don't really want to invest much more in speed. Maybe I can just forego a bit of displacement. Oh, not that much. There. 19... 19,500 is... Uh, sorry, 19,550 to 19,600 is the limit. That's when the ship starts shrinking. So that still gives me almost a thousand... Actually, a little over a thousand tons to work with. That's quite a lot. Um, let's use the 533s. 21-inch torpedoes. Electric-powered. Puts me in a range of 12.7, and I think that would be a fairly comfortable range to maneuver at. Now then, I wouldn't be surprised if I already have more armor on my heavy cruiser than they have on their battleships. So I'm not going to be touching this much. I'm just going to give her an increased complement of shells. Uh, Anti-flood 3. Citadel's already as best it could be. Barbettes can be up-armored. Triple hull... Maximum bulkheads. I can even set the range. No, I can't set it to very long. Let's just go with long. I know it's not required, but whatever. It's my build, I'm deciding. Um, and as for hydrophone station, I'm using hydrophone 3. And that's... Well, it's in case I want to get close and the enemy starts lobbing torpedoes at me. I do want to know. And I want to be able to avoid. So this should allow me to do that.
Let's see what the AI has for me today. I have spotted them. I wonder if they have spotted me. I'm assuming not. Yeah, I'm packing way more firepower on this one heavy cruiser than they are on one of their battleships. 12% accuracy. Good lord. 13% and we're firing a high... no, not a high explosive, we're firing armor piercing. So apparently the ship is fairly confident in its ability to actually penetrate the hull. Penetrate the armor on these battleships. Indeed. Some damage to the funnel with an over penetration. Not just your random penetration, an over pen. What the? I don't even know what I'm hitting. I'm causing a flooding. Which leads me to believe that I'm actually doing damage to... Probably the deck? And it flies right through the deck and does damage to the... Well, the flooding compartment. Apparently. I want to charge straight into this warship. Just to see what happens. Because if it's plunging fire that's killing this thing, then I wonder if I can do the same thing with direct fire. Now, I do recognize, recognize that 9-inch guns are pretty big for a cruiser. I think most cruisers had about 8-inch guns. So sure enough, 9-inch guns are fairly sizable. But still, that thing took a bunch of damage. I'm also hoping that by getting closer, my identification is going to go up faster. Because I'm really curious exactly at how much armor these guys have and what type. Because it's 1890 for them. I'm 50 years ahead, hence the night at the museum. So how effective is their armor when fighting against a heavy cruiser? Even the 4-inch guns are opening up at this point. And the torpedo tubes. Are you telling me that we're doing damage with secondary armaments of 4 inch against what's supposedly a battleship? I have been detected. But they still haven't done much. Oh, hold on. Were you the guy that was flooding? Yeah, he was. So he is very good at controlling the flooding and pumping out all the water. Right, case mate, hold. Your displacement on what's supposedly a battleship is lower than that of my heavy cruiser. I have 19,000 tons. You have 13,000 tons. You have an armor of 11 inch belt armor. There you go, your deck armor sucks. Your accuracy, well, you can fire out to 11 clicks. Which means that you are very much in range. However... You're not shooting. I think the accuracy is too low. <laughs> I'm getting penetrations on the main tower and the secondary tower with the four inch guns. Oh my god, I've, I've tried battles where you had a 10 year age gap. But with a 50 and 10 times the numbers. I thought that the AI was going to have a chance. I might be wrong. Few bulkheads on the Imperator Alexander III. Yeah, nothing to report so far. She might actually be able to dodge those torpedoes. She still hasn't seen the torpedoes. Now she's detected them. Oh, better late than never. Let's see what one of those 21-inch torpedoes does against the Azov. Oh, two of them. Ooh! Okay. Uh, that was much, much, much more damage than I'd expected. We have... 
been shot at 95 times, we've not been damaged at all. Whereas I have shot 140, or I've scored 140 hits out of almost 800 shots fired. Range 3.6. Now you should be able to fire, but look at that accuracy. 0.6%. My accuracy, 56%. The big question is, can I pen that? Range, 3.5%. So let's take the higher margin, which is 17.7 .7 inches of belt armor, is what I can pen. And that means that, in fact, yes, I can penetrate the belt armor on this ship. I can definitely penetrate the belt extended. This just really goes to show how deadly these ships have become. Don't ever underestimate the tech difference. And don't think you can easily make up for it with larger numbers. Because this battleship would like to have a word with you and tell you that it might not be as comfortable as it looks. I actually destroyed the main gun. Turret armor? 11.6. Same as the belt. Interesting. There goes the uh, Alexander... Uh, torpedo tube out. Seeing as one is usually nearly enough, I'd say three is definitely enough. Now I'm getting curious if I can do this with a light cruiser. Just a fast firing light cruiser against ten Russian battleships. Is it possible? Because I have a relatively good amount of armor. I have, let's say about 12 to 13 inches of armor thanks to my armor quality scheme their guns well they're actually struggling at two and a half kilometer range they can penetrate 13 inches of armor but at 13 kilometer sorry at two and a half kilometer range at 1.6 actually i'm firing 12 9 inch guns at you every 15 seconds whereas you are firing one no, sorry, two 10-inch barrels at me every 60 seconds. Have I been hit? Yeah, I've been hit twice. And to think that originally I considered doing this with a battle cruiser. That would be bloody murder. I mean, this, this isn't pretty, what I'm doing right now, but at least they seem to be trying to put up a fight. If you do this with a battle cruiser, good lord. Alright, can a light cruiser do the same? Now I'm wondering, can a light cruiser do the same? Let's start a bit closer. Um, what happens if I spawn in the middle of them, in a light cruiser? Don't ask me how the light cruiser got there, it just happened. Something went down and I'm now in the middle of this group. Can I build something that resembles an Atlanta? So I have five inch rapid firing guns. I'm gonna go with coincidence rangefinder because I'm already in the middle of that group. Um, let's put a bit more displacement on her. I'll fix that in a bit. Speed of 38 knots might be overdoing it. Gear 2. Uh, maximum bulkheads. Aux 4. Shaft 3. Group 4. Triple. Anti flood 2. And Citadel. Turtleback. Barbettes 3. <clears throat> Shells light. Less pen. But also less gun reload. Mmm, propellant. Two powder to make up for that loss of shell penetration. Is there any possibility that I put up, for example, a bar... No, barbettes haven't been invented yet. 1940, and you cannot put a barbette on a light cruiser. 
Give me a break. Oh, ship's overweight. 28% efficiency? That helps. Mm -mm. Ship's too heavy. Uh, what's causing that? Anti-flood might have something to do with it, but I have no torpedo blister. Maybe the speed's too high. Let's just maintain it at 35 knots and switch this back to very short range. That might allow me to put another few turrets on here. And yes, I know it's not going to be an exact Atlanta. <clears throat> I'm just thinking of a fast 5-inch gun cruiser. That's going to be just broadsiding these ships everywhere. Let's see, put this turret farther back, that one farther back. And then try and bring the whole superstructure. No, superstructure doesn't want to go any farther back. Secondary tower does. So that would allow me to, if it goes far enough, put another 5-inch gun somewhere. Here to... Hello. Here. I still have some displacement left. I have 2, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 barrels. Right. Armor. What is that stuff? Well, maybe a bit of belt armor. Effectively, I'm already sporting about 8 inches of belt armor. Sweet Jesus, that's a lot of armor. For a light cruiser on the belt. Let's take 3.5, 4.5. Keep the turrets alive. Oh, you cannot put <laughs> you can't put more than six inches of turret armor on there. Understood. Real time, five point six seconds. For the four inches, it's gonna be even better at three point eight seconds. Penetration? At a thousand meters, twelve inches. That should be enough to take down one of these ships. Quickly. Alright, welcome to the Detroit. Halt. We are 300 meters away. I have a displacement of 9,900 tons. Oh shit, that's not what I was... <laughs> that's not what I was hoping for. Yeah, that is one way that you're going to kill me. Ow, 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 ow. Oh no. Am I going to get shots off? Open fire. If you please. Guns. That was good. Did you just miss? The Netron Mania missed with her guns at point blank range. And my guns are just flat out refusing to fire. Even when I am locked onto the target. Can we hit something else? Detroit. Detroit? No? Detroit seems to be listing a bit. Just a tad. I had not expected the battleships to be packing torpedoes, but I could have. And I should have. What I do not understand is why the ship just doesn't fire. Sure, I'm making a pretty aggressive turn. Let's even that out. Ah, looks like we're shooting. Sort of. Yeah, we're opening up with the 5-inch guns. At this angle, I'm probably bouncing every... Wait, one. Are you flooding? Oh, because somebody else hit you. Yeah, I imagine that would do it. I don't even have to shoot this guy. He's going to do it himself. I'm bouncing too much. Starboard turn. Target the... Jesus. That's the name of your ship. 
in Pararica, Ekaterina, Velikaya. Sure. And we're fuller the Velikaya, otherwise it's going to be a tongue twister every time we try to pronounce it. 44% chance to hit. One click out. Pen. 15 inch. Armor belt. 10. Night at the museum. It's just a big test round of seeing what I can get away with. And right now I'm actually not disappointed. <laughs> I'm a bit confused that my ship hasn't sunk. Because I have been hit pretty bad. Ooh. Juicy. Yep, she's gone. Extensive fire. Flash fired. I have some decent damage repair parties on this ship, but it's only anti-flood too. And with all engine compartments flooded, those engines are not going to get repaired anytime soon. Rostislav. At least her casemate guns have a decent chance to hit me. At about 7%. But the main guns? Those big 11-inch guns that she has? Well, not really. They're just dunking shells everywhere. And this, gentlemen, is why you keep your navy up to date. to the main gun. If I can keep peppering the main gun, I might at some point cause a flash fire. Oh shit. Shit, shit, shit. That's gonna sink the Detroit. Or is it? No, she fluffed it. The Detroit can make such a sharp turn since she's not doing her full speed but only 19 knots. That with that turning circle, I'll be able to turn in front of the torpedoes. I'll actually be able to dodge them. Rostislav is now taking a pretty heavy beating with the 5 inch guns. And with minimum bulkheads, this is another AI design decision waiting to backfire. Because she simply can't stop floods. Looks like she had to seal off three compartments, but they're completely filled. Oh shit, I'm heading back into torpedo infested waters. Like that, for example. Detroit, you're gonna have to make a pretty sharp turn. Yeah, we're fine. And now this one's gonna launch. The uh, old nemesis. Yep, there we go. The old nemesis. The Netron Mania. Mania. ease with which this light cruiser just dances around everything is nice. It's really impressive. Target the uh, Arkhangel Uriel. What if I go HE only? Does that do anything? It sets fires as expected. But we're pretty much just cracking the armor. What if I go AP only on this ship? Whoa! Fires, flutters, roger... Ooh, flash fires. Jesus. Dead. Target, Smolensk. Oh, I fucking hate Smolensk. Not the city per se, but you have a ship in World of Warship. Oh. No. That is such a nightmare to play against. So I've sunk, what, two battleships so far? And it looks like Smolensk is going to be next because she has a flash fire and an ammo detonation and most of the ships on fire. She's gone. You have to be kidding me. She has torpedo tubes portside and starboard. 
So she's not going to be that dangerous. I don't expect a torpedo salvo. Then again, one never quite expects a torpedo salvo. It just kind of happens. Although spawning within the middle of a group at a thousand meter range might have something to do with it. Rostislav tried to hit. Completely dunked her shots. The Detroit is still flooding on her stern. Now granted, I played this one very carelessly. But I am surprised at how deadly a light cruiser can be. And to think that I started out, or wanted to start out with a battle cruiser. So, this is why you keep your navy up to date. But a night at the museum like this can be fun. Just taking on a bunch of dreadnoughts with a heavy cruiser, or even with a light cruiser. And as long as you don't get torpedoed in the first two minutes of the battle, you can actually get quite a bit of business done against those dreadnoughts. Anyway, just a silly video to uh, make sure I have some content in advance. I hope you had a good laugh out of it, and I shall see you guys soon for another video.